So let's first dive into our in-clinic portion. So our in-clinic portion, we're going to start off with our chemical peels. So here in Canada, you have two beautiful offerings for chemical peels. You have your first one here is your G-Peel 30. Now, what I want to point out with your G-Peel 30 is what's underneath it here. It says nano-constructed fixotropic gel. So the first thing that we need to discuss is glycolic acid. Glycolic acid is a phenomenal alpha hydroxy acid. Why it works so well is because it's a tiny little molecule. And so because it is so small, it can rapidly penetrate through the skin. That's why we love it so much. It's great for everybody. Hyperpigmentation, acne, you know, anti-aging. It kind of hits every single person because it really speeds up that skin cell turnover rate, really helps um, remove those hyperpigmented cells. Beautiful, beautiful peel. Now, what we've done here is we're using a 30% glycolic acid, which is wonderful. But then we said, you know, because we have Derm Shield in this product, we can make this even better. So what we did is we then nano-constructed that glycolic molecule, which means we've made it even smaller. And you know that once that molecule gets smaller, now it won't just rapidly penetrate the layers. It's going to fly through the layers of the skin. So even though technically, yes, when you look at it in a formula place, it is a 30% glycolic acid, because of the structure, because of the nano construction, it acts like a 50% glycolic because of how rapidly it can penetrate through the skin. Now, because it is so small, because it is such a tiny little nano construction, we had to suspend it in a thixotropic gel. A little bit of a mouthful. But basically that thixotropic gel is gonna do two things. Number one, it's gonna keep it stable. When you work with such tiny molecules, sometimes they like to destabilize very quickly. So the thixotropic gel keeps it stable. Number two, the thixotropic gel is also going to allow for an even distribution. When you start working in nano construction, it's very easy. They like to kind of clump up in one area. So that thixotropic gel is going to allow for an even application over the skin. Kind of casts a wide net and then allows those nano constructed glycolic molecules to just fly through the skin. With our G Peel 30, this is going to be a timed peel. So glycolic, that's how it works. It's not how much of the peel you use, it's how long you leave it on. Because remember, glycolic works by rapidly penetrating. So it doesn't matter if I put, you know, half the jar on your face, it's still about how long are we leaving it on. So you can be as conservative as three to five minutes, and you can be as aggressive all the way up to 15 minutes. It's just going to depend on your patient. So I typically say if it's somebody brand new, you've never seen them before, start at three to five minutes, see how they're feeling. Once they're at three to five minutes, I would chart in their medical record notation, you know, patient had slight arrhythmia around nasal labial folds on a, a pain scale of one to 10. They reached a six within 90 seconds, they were down to a two. I would just chart whatever it is that they're feeling. And then maybe next time they can come in, I could do five to seven minutes seven to 10 and so on, all the way up to 15, all right? Now, once your G-Peel has been timed, you will then neutralize it with our neutralizer, which I'm gonna talk about in a moment, and rinse the skin with water. Um, that rinsing of the water is just going to allow you to remove any of that leftover peel and neutralizer residue from the skin, all right? So that is our G-Peel 30. Then we have our P-Peel 20. And our PPL20 is gonna be your big dog. This is gonna be the big guns that you're gonna be playing with. So your PPL20 is going to be uh, per, um, comprised of half peruvic acid, half lactic acid. So it's a 20% peruvic and a 20% lactic. So peruvic acid, it's very interesting. Peruvic acid, um, it's not an alpha hydroxy acid. It's not a beta hydroxy acid. It's known as an alpha keto. Um, so it's kind of in its class all of its own. Interesting fact though, we all have peruvic acid in our bodies sitting here. It lives in our muscles. Um, and what's very interesting, how many of you guys have gotten a massage before? Raise your hand. Most of us have. You know when you're a massage therapist and they're like, ooh, you're crunchy back here. We gotta work all that lactic acid out. That lactic acid was once peruvic acid. 
What happens in muscular tears or, or injury, that pyruvic acid converts into lactic acid and it kind of and that's kind of the repair process that takes place. But that let us know on a chemistry level, ooh, lactic and pyruvic play nice together. And we found that in an oxygen rich environment, meaning topically applied, there's no conversion there. So they can work side by side together. So it's great, it's a really beautiful blend. Peruvic acid. So like I might start somebody in the G peel and then I'll graduate them to the P peel. I love the P peel for more advanced hyperpigmentation, more intensified melasma. Um, you know, maybe I got somebody's acne under control and now I'm treating all the scarring left over. I love the P peel for that. Um, you know, that, that deeper fine lines, wrinklings, age management patient, I love that. Um, it's my favorite to alternate. Like if my patient's doing like RF microneedling, I might have them do that. Once their skin is healed, I'll have them come in for a pee peel and they can alternate that way. Beautiful results. It's actually what I do myself. Um, testimonial. Uh, but again, it's going to be nano-constructed. So you're gonna get that beautiful rapid product penetration. You're gonna get that nice thixotropic gel application. So an even distribution of those acids on the skin. And both of these, like I said, are going to contain the derm shield. So you're gonna have these nice low pHs with some very nice hefty um, acid comp uh, composition to them as well. Now the sidekicks to your chemical peels are going to be obviously your pre-peel conditioner. So prior to putting on a peel, we need to degrease the skin. And this is really important because if we have any lipids or ceramides or fatty acids on our skin, which is what our skin naturally makes, then the peel is gonna get slightly buffered and it's not gonna do what it needs to do. So we need to degrease that skin. And so essentially that's what our pre-peel conditioner is. So our pre-peel conditioner does have a light alcohol base, which is really nice. Um, we also included the derm shield in it, so we're just trying to lay down that derm shield as much as possible. And then we also added a med extracted chamomile extract. And I bring this up because back when I started doing chemical peel treatments, we would always say degrease the skin with acetone. <laughs> I know, it's wild, right? And I just remember every, and it, but it did the trick. I mean, it dries the skin out super quick or alcohol or like rubbing alcohol. And my patients would always be like, is this the peel? And I'm like, no, this is the part before the peel. <laughs> like we haven't even gotten to the peel yet, right? So it's really uncomfortable. It's really strong. It goes up into your nostrils. It's hard to breathe. So even though this has an alcohol base to it, that med extracted chamomile goes in and cuts through that. Again, chamomile we know is very calming, it's very soothing, but it also makes it very tolerable for our patient. But what I also love about this product, having the derm shield in it, I will use it prior to a chemical peel, but I'll also use it prior to other services. So think of other services that cause inflammation in the skin. Not, not services where we want inflammation in the skin, not like RF or IPL or BBL or ultrasound. But think about traditional microneedling, dermaplaning, laser resurfacing, where it's like, I'm not requiring that energy to stay in my skin, but it does cause inflammation. I put that pre-peel conditioner down every time. Before I do a microneedle, I do a swipe. Before I do a halo laser, I do a swipe. Any sort of resurfacing laser, I do a swipe. Before oxygeneo, do a swipe. It's phenomenal. Now, things like IPL, BBL, you know, fractional type work where we're trying to trap that heat in the skin to create that change in the tissue, I wouldn't put a swipe down because I want to keep, that. it's all about trapping those little explosions of heat in the skin. I don't want to do that. So, but if we're just doing resurfacing all day long, I mean, if, you, if we're going more traditional, prior to a wax job, if I'm doing like a lip wax or an eyebrow wax, throw that down. It's amazing. I, I saw one hand here and then I'm going to come to you. Yes. Um, just the pee peel. Is it the same time as three to five minutes or after? Yes. Excellent question. I'm so sorry. Yes. So, so back to the pee peel, um, the time frame would be the same. As low as three minutes, as high as 15. Thank you so much for pointing that out. Yes. So are you still using a regular cleanser, let's just say, prior to using the pre peel? Uh, yes. Okay. So we, we're going to get to our cleansers when we get into home okay. care because they kind of go back and forth. But yeah, I would always do a double cleanse. Yeah. And then I go in. And how I personally like to apply the pre peel, um, there's a couple of different ways. Um, I personally am a fan of getting everything off. I'm a, I'm a New Yorker. I'm, a, I'm an aggressive girl. I get in there, I'm like, we're doing it all today. 
So I like a little, uh, the textured sterilized medical gauze. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I work in circles. I want to lift that vellus hair. I want to get every single lipid off the skin. Um, now, if I'm doing a dermaplane beforehand, which I am known to do that, I'll dermaplane first, then I'll do a swipe. Warn your patient, all the derm shield in the world isn't going to help you. I'm going to put that peel down, you're going to hit the ceiling for a minute. It's not for the faint of heart, all right? They're, they're going to feel that one. I do that one a lot. I love that one. Um, but with when if I'm dermaplaning first, then I don't need to do the little circles because I'm literally physically removing that top layer, all right? So the pre-peel conditioner, yes, it's used in conjunction with our peels, but it can fit into a lot of different arenas in your treatment facilities. And then we have our peel neutralizer. So obviously with both the P-peel and the G-peel, we're going to need to stop the peel from penetrating any further. So once we hit our minute mark, whatever that is for our patient, we need to stop it. And how we're gonna stop it is through a heavily alkaline solution. So I wish I had a prettier way to explain it. This is fancy baking soda, ladies and gentlemen. This is sodium bicarbonate with derm shield in it. So when I use this, you're gonna notice uh, in our demo today, you're gonna see it foam up. That's the chemical reaction of the acid meeting the alkalinity of the sodium bicarbonate. And it's very common that the patient feels one more zip up on their skin at this portion. It quickly, and that really quick movement, the brain's like, oh wait, I don't really love that. Um, so they might feel it, I, I always let them know. You're probably gonna feel it again. And then once that's done, I rinse it with water. So I rinse away some, with some nice cool water, I rinse away any of the residue that's left behind. All right, then moving forward, we have our thermogel. Now our thermogel is not part of the peeling process, but it is part of the next step process if you're gonna do a full out treatment. Um, now we have long protocols and we have short protocols. Um, if you're gonna do a longer protocol, then introduce the thermogel after the peel. Imagine the thermogel is like if a warming massage oil, a pre-extraction solution, and a ultrasound jelly got together and had a baby, that's what thermogel is, okay? So the main ingredient there is gonna be called zeolite. Zeolite, fun fact, you find it in kitty litter. I didn't know this. My mom called me the other day. And she's like, my mom's like a crazy cat woman. Okay, like her cats have now replaced me as her child. It's like a thing. And she's like, have you heard of zeolite? It's in the cat litter. I don't know what it is. I'm like, oh, we actually use it in skincare. Totally fine. She's like, all right, we're fine. But zeolite, it's used in kitty litter because it's detoxifying. Guess what it does for your skin? Detoxifying. It's a natural volcanic mineral. So it has this beautiful detoxifying ability to it. Um, it also can help soften the skin. So back in the day, when we were using pre-extraction solutions, they were heavily alkaline. Because when you use really alkaline substances, it makes the skin really soft and really permeable. So remember, acidic, we're kind of like peeling the skin, alkaline, we're kind of doing the reverse. The problem is, is every time you go heavily alkaline for long periods of time, after being heavily acidic, causes a lot of inflammation. So what's great about our thermogel is I'm able to get that softening ability on the skin surface for extractions without messing with the pH too much. It's a pretty neutral pH product. The other cool thing about zeolite, this is my favorite thing, it self warms. So the more you manipulate it with your fingertips and your hands, the warmer it gets. So it's kind of like this massage oil that'll never get cold on you. So if I, you know, did a peel and let's say I'm working on that true acneic patients and I'm gonna wanna do some extractions in the T-zone area, I'll get some thermogel out and I'll really spend a couple of minutes manipulating it through that T-zone or wherever I wanna do extractions. And the patient's like, oh, it's a massage. I'm like, yeah, sure, we'll call it that. But I'm just <laughs> trying to soften everything up here. And then once I've done that for a couple of minutes, you know, whether it's like five or 10 minutes to get it really nice and warm and soft, I can just wipe it away and I can go in and do my extractions and then rinse. You can even potentially do a pre-peel conditioner swipe to keep it nice and clean after an extraction if you wanted to. All right, so the thermogel is great. It is water-based. So if you do have any um, electrical devices that need a conductor, this is perfect for it. So if you do micro microcurrent, galvanic iontophoresis, anything where you need slip and glide in a conductor, the thermogel can do that as well. So it's a very multifaceted product and it gives beautiful slip. Word of advice, a little bit goes a very, very long way. And I will say that about all of our products at noon. You'll learn very quickly, like 
you need the smallest bit of our cleanser because trust me, you'll like cleanse your whole body if you use too much. You're like, oh, get the cat in here. I don't know what else to do with all of this. It just it keeps foaming and foaming. All right. So that was our back bar treatment. How do we feel with that information? Any the questions have been phenomenal. Do we have yes? So with the peels, just to understand because mm -hmm. with um, the Derma Shield active in it. Am I, when I'm putting the peel on, am I still looking and like going based on their feeling or what I'm seeing on their skin? Both. Okay. Both. Because remember, Derm Shield, just like everything in this world, is not 100% effective. Right. It's up to 95% effective. Okay. So when I work in Maine, right, so like really, really Northeast America, their skin is a little bit more sensitive. You know, the sun isn't out as much, it's a little bit colder, the weather's more intense. When I do peels up there, I find my models and my patients <coughs> feel things a little bit more. Yeah. Versus when I go to Florida, where I have little leather couch faces, right? <laughs> you know, they're just all like super sun damaged, really, really resistant. I find I put a pee peel on, they're like, I feel nothing. I'm like, cool. Yeah. You know, I'm like, great. I'll do another layer of a pee peel on you. So the cool thing about the pee peel is you can layer it on itself. Uh, G peel, one layer is fine, but the, the pee peel you can definitely layer. But it's going to be both. It's yeah. going to be a visual and what they're telling me. So I find that some people, they look worse than what they actually feel. <laughs> yeah. There's the, those patients who are like, how are we doing? They're like, I'm fine. You're like, because you look like a stop sign. You know, <laughs> I, I've been there. So yeah, take, take, you know, take note of what you're visually seeing, put that in their, their records, and also what they're telling you. All right? Yes? Can you layer the two pills together in a work You can potentially, yeah. So like if you wanted to, like if I was doing a more aggressive treatment, like, but I wouldn't do it firsthand. Like I would make sure they probably see me at least three times. And then if I was treating like aggressive melasma, I could potentially do a three minute G peel with like a five minute P peel over the top if they can handle that. I would neutralize rinse and then do the P peel. I wouldn't okay. layer them. Yeah. No, okay, so yeah, neutralize, yeah. They're not meant to kind of work synergistically that way. They kind of work independently, but you can. All right, excellent questions. So just oh yeah, for sure. Peels. Is there a recommended frequency for them? The the question is: Is there a frequency on the pills? Peels, not pills. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be dependent on the patient. Mm -hmm. So you can do them as frequent as every two weeks, yeah. or if they're more sensitive, sensitized, reactive, um, up to four to six weeks okay. in between. I've been known to do them weekly, <laughs> but that's just me. But I'm also insane, so. <laughs> Um, but typically we say, you know, the frequency can go upwards to two weeks. But again, it's just going to be a patient by patient thing. I know in skincare we want everything to fit in a box. You know, people text me all the time, they're like, what's happening here? I'm like, I don't know the skin's being skin, it's being weird. I sometimes don't have an answer, you know, so. All right.